All right. The first thing we want to achieve, which we mentioned, is to understand what identities are. Okay. Apply. Big identities, pentagram identities, actually. Uh, understand. Uh, reciprocal of the three ratios that we know. Fine. Cosine and tangent. They are reciprocal. We will introduce that. Understand and apply. The Pythagorean identity. Pythagorean identity. Three ratios. So these are the things we want to quickly do in the next 15 minutes or so. So identities. And Shetanian. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you for coming. So an identity. Is should we say an equation? Yeah, you can say that. Which is valid for all values of the variable of variables. We sometimes use equivalent instead of equals in an identity. AG. A plus B squared is A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. So left hand, left hand side and right hand side. I should have said an identity is an equation, which is fine, it's okay. Left hand side and right hand side are going to be the same for different values of A and B. Understand? So that's one. Another example of an identity is x squared minus y squared is exactly going to be equivalent to x plus y, x minus y. So here also, left hand, left hand side and right hand side are going to be the same for all the values of x and y. <laughs> In IGCSC, we have used a calculator to demonstrate that sine of an angle divided by cos of an angle is equal to tan of the same angle. 
So here also we can use three lines to say, okay, this is equivalent to this for every value of alpha. Okay. Now, so let's move on. You can leave some space if I'm too fast when you are writing, uh, so that we don't know waste time. Okay, waiting for everybody to copy. Okay. Now that we have talked about what identities are, let's discuss something called the unit circle. This is the basis of everything we want to do. So we may write the unit circle. Does anyone understand what I mean by unit circle before I begin? Yanko? Uh, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to say no. So, yeah. Yeah, you can try. Just say something. Is, is it like a, maybe like a tool or, or something to identify something? I don't know. No, it's also a circle, but why do I say unit? Is this connected? Not really. One? <laughs> yeah, one. What is one there? I have no idea. Just guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Anyone? Uh, I'm not sure, but is it the one with the different units like kilometer and meter and then no, there's like no, arrows? No, no. No. First of all, it's a it's a one we did before. I remember a bit. It's like like cos uh of the angle. No, don't, you don't need angle. to go to the cos yet. What is a unit circle? That's my question. Uh, oh, is, is it, it the circle when it's like this big? All the all the all the units on the line of the circle. You guys are thinking too much. That's a problem. It's like me asking you what is two times two, and you are thinking of the the movers theorem. You're thinking too much. <laughs> you think the answer is something huge in space, whereas I'm only asking you for a drop of water. A unit circle is a circle with radius one, period. I said it's a circle, but why the unit? So you, all you need to think about is, okay, what are the parts of a circle that Mr. Daniel could be asking? What is the most obvious thing that we describe when we talk about the circle? The radius. So you can just guess. That, oh, is it when the radius is one? Something like that. You're thinking too much. <laughs> so a unit circle. Is the one with radius one unit. Okay. So if this is a unit circle, what we are saying is that this green line is of length one. A radius is one. It's a unit circle. Now, this unit circle will be used to talk about our Pythagorean identity. Two ways we can do this, actually different ways we can do it. Different authors have different ways of talking about it. Some people talk about it with the equation of a circle. You guys didn't do equation of a circle. I'm just going to fit that in. If I want to find the equation of this circle, I can identify a point P with coordinates x comma y. 
right? Please, can I have your attention? Don't write, just look at what I'm doing. Point P with coordinate x comma y, which means I can have, I can get a like a right angle triangle, which will look like this. The radius would be this, yes? Mm -hmm. Or maybe yeah. the radius is just R in general. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this is P, this is O, let's call this Q. Now, which is X and which is Y? X is the bottom. Well, well seen, I label it so oh, speak like I want you to speak. Thank you. Yes. OQ is OQ. X and PQ is Y. Yanko, you are not speaking. Oh, yeah, I understand. OK, great. Then you realize that because it starts from the origin, actually, because it starts from the origin, then you realize that, oh, actually, by Pythagoras theorem, Pythagoras theorem, R squared equals to Y squared plus X squared. Or you could just say that X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. This is the equation of a circle of radius R, whose center is at origin, which is the but the equation of a circle is not in your syllabus, so no need to worry about that. Equation of a circle, the equation of a circle with radius r with radius r whose center is at origin. If the center is not at origin, check this out. Again, this is not what you should worry about. I'm just giving you like an additional information. If the center is not at origin, let's say this center, let's say this is the center, it's a radius, let's change the color of that. Let's say the center is A comma B. And A comma B may not be zero, zero. Okay, again, the radius is R. You pick any random point X comma Y. Okay, this is center O again. Again, we draw, we try to form a right angle triangle. Okay. Let's say this is Q. Then we can bring out a triangle that looks like this. Okay. Attention. O, P, and Q. Again, what is O, P? The radius. R. What is... OQ. The X. Again? Uh, the X value. Nope. X minus A. X minus A. Does everybody understand that? Yes, yes. yes. Hello, Mr. X value. I, yeah, I understand. What is PQ? Y minus B. Y minus B, thank you. Alex, I don't want to call your name before you respond. Again, Again I, just I don't get it. Then you speak. So you, I had to tell you something before you could say you don't get it. This is why I get angry. Q 
is here. This P means the X value here is P and the Y value here is Q. So if, you, if this is an X, Y plane, this is your Y for this value and this is your X for this value. Mm -hmm. Right? So you're, oh, okay, okay. So from here to here is just X minus A. Mm -hmm. And this value here is B. Mm -hmm. because of this point, right? Mm -hmm. This value here is X because of this one. And the Y equivalent, Y coordinate is this. This is going to be A. That's what we have just done. Okay. So maybe I add the X, Y coordinates and we label it proper. Yes. So if this is our XY plane. Then we can take any broken line. There's no broken line. Let's use a different color so we can see clearly. So But you see, so this is A and this is X. And on the Y axis, is B, and this is Y. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the Pythagoras theorem again. R squared equals to Y minus B squared, X minus A squared which implies x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared. And this is the equation of a circle with center a, b, and radius r. But like I said, we do not need to know this equation of circle. It's always good to just have that information. Because when I'm this as I'm going to discuss the Pythagorean identity, I will refer to the first, the radius, the equation of a unit circle. Something like that. So that was why I mentioned it. Um, it's just going to be an additional knowledge for you. It's not something you should worry about for IB. Quickly, sorry because of our time, I won't be able to wait for everyone to copy the notes. Uh, I'll send you the PDF format of the screen. I am saving it. So you receive the PDF right after the class. So having talked about the unit circle, now let's go to the identity straight away. We'll only talk about the identity um, and maybe I can play one or two example on how to use it to simplify something or proof and maybe work something myself then on tuesday you will do your practice in the classroom just make sure you review these things before tuesday now the trig identity begins proper Let's say trigonometry ratios first. For your 
for the general class, we've discussed sine, cos, and tan. Is that not? But for the HL class, we're going to discuss three more. They are the reciprocals of sine, cos, and tan. Reciprocal when you flip them over. I'm trying not to use the word inverse. When you say inverse sine, we're talking about arc sine, inverse cos, arc cos. They are not the same as what I'm talking about here. So I use the word reciprocal. Okay. Uh, we know these three basic regressions sine, cos, and tan. Okay. For the HL course, we will introduce the reciprocals. They are, do you know what reciprocal means? When you flip something over, it's one over, okay? They are Second or just sec co seconds, which is complement of seconds and co tangents. Check this out, everyone. Look at the screen sec, cosec, and cot are defined as follows which are, please, uh, one sec, which are, now look, sec theta is equal to one over, you see, for each of them, just consider the third letter, and that is the reciprocal of what they represent. Can you see that? Sec theta is one over cos theta, Okay, this is sec theta, second. Cosec theta, the third letter is S, so that represents one over sine theta. And cot theta is one over what? Tan theta. These are the three extra ratios that HL will use. Again, sec, cosec, and Cots, second, cosecant, and cotangent. All you have to do is remember the third letter in each, and that tells you what they stand for. Mm -hmm. Understand? So this first mm -hmm. one, second, and the last. Is it okay the way I've written it? I prefer to write it in a straight line, like different uh, one power line so that it's easy to label later if we need to label it. So I'm just going to write the same thing again. Please, you're welcome to write. So those are the three. So the awareness of these three extractive ratios is very important for HL students. You're missing a R after the A R E. They are, yes. They are yes. second, yeah. second. Thank you.
from my GCSE, you already know <clears throat> that sine divided by cos is what, everybody? Tangent. Tangent. So we're not going to talk more about that. Uh, the trig identities. So the major one we'll talk about today are uh, called Pythagorean identities, okay? So class, we know that for any angle, theta, sine theta divided by cos theta is equal to tan theta. So I'm going to call that equation one, because we're going to label them equation one, equation two, equation three, something like that. So today we just be four of them, and that's it. We shall use is in understanding the Pythagorean identity. So equation one is not a problem because it's familiar. Looks familiar, sorry, I'm trying to rush things. I'll come back and show you stuff. Now, let's quickly look at the Pythagorean identity, which is where we're actually going. We're just trying to build some very important foundations. That's why we're doing the previous ones. Pythagorean identity. Again, we start with the unit circle. Okay. We start with the unit circle. That means a circle with radius, what? One. One. Now, let a point P, let P be a point on the unit circle. Okay. Let P be a point on the unit circle such that the angle of inclination is theta. Please pay attention. Px comma y is a unit circle. Sorry, the circle is a unit circle. Px comma y is a point on the unit circle. No, I shouldn't write r, I should write one. Okay, please pay attention. Now, we want to get something for x and y in terms of sine and cosine. We want to get an expression for x and y in terms of sine and cosine. So let's try to form our right angle triangle. Yes. Then we agree that this is y and this is x. Is that not? So this is on the origin, right? Yes, origin, yes, origin, thank you. Okay, we agree this is X and Y. So that would be X and Y because of the origin. Then you agree with me, please pay attention, that sine theta is Y over one. Is that not? Yes. Implies that Y is equal to sine theta. And mm -hmm. Cos theta is x over one, or simply put, x is equal to cos theta. So in some textbook, you might see this picture. In some textbooks, you might see this picture. So in case you are wondering how, this is R. 
So you might see something like this. You might see the point P. And the label of the point P will go like this. P into brackets, cos theta, comma, sine theta. This is Y. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think even in your textbook is written like that, but this is why. So it's just like starting from a unit circle with uh, center origin, those X coordinates, X comma Y can be expressed in terms of sine and cos. So I can say so that, so that we have this, okay? Let me write so that we have this one. Okay, now this is still your one. This is still your theta. Now, from what we have done in the previous slide, this unit circle has an equation. From the equation of the unit circle, the equation of the unit circle. Remember the equation is x squared plus y squared is equal to one, yes? If you substitute the value, the x, the expression for x and y, then you will get cos theta squared and sine theta squared is equal to one. Am I making sense? Yeah. So, so yes. we write this as cos squared theta. When you put square here, you are saying everything all squared. We don't write it like this. This cos theta square means you are squaring theta, then you find the cosine. But when you say mm -hmm. cos squared theta, you are saying cos theta, everything raised to power two. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So this is how we write. So which means we have cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. This is called Pythagorean identity. Because look at it, it's actually from Pythagoras theorem that you generated this one. Am I making sense? Yeah. Talk to me, please. Yes. Some will yes. call it sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one, it doesn't matter. In your formula booklet, it is written as cos squared plus sine squared is equal to one as well. It doesn't matter. So this is going to be our identity number two. But the implication of this identity is also that you can express in terms of cos alone, cos squared theta will be one minus sine squared. Am I making sense? And similarly, <laughs> sine squared theta will be what? One minus cos squared theta. Is Elsin the only one in the class, or is it my question too difficult for others? Yes. Sine squared. Uh, sine sin squared would be equal to one minus cos squared. Min minus cos theta. So we call all these the Pythagorean identity. So this is the real Pythagorean identity, this one. And these are the implications of the Pythagorean identity, these ones. You know what I mean by implication? The consequence, what it leads to. Am I making sense? What it has led to. So we call this equation two, identity two, for example. Now, to get identity three and four, we're going to divide identity two by sine square and also divide identity two by cos square again. And that will give us identity three and four. And that's all about the identity that are called the Pythagorean identity. So let's quickly do that. Dividing two by, maybe we can do cos squared first. So what would that give? It's going to give cos squared theta 
divided by cos squared theta. Yes, tell me what to write next. Uh, sine squared theta. Uh, what? Well, say that again. Uh, okay, plus. Sorry. You assume I know what you're saying. How many times have I told you not to do that? Sine squared theta uh, divided by cos squared theta equals to mm -hmm. one over cos squared theta. Good. So what is the first one? One. Second one? A uh, tan square theta. Tan square theta. And the last? One over cos one over. square. Second square theta. Ah. Sex square theta. And this is going to be our identity number three. Any questions, please? Nope. Looking to four people. Nope. So this will be identity number three. So like I said, we are dividing two by cos square. So we're going to be balanced because cos and sine are partners. So let's divide two again by sine square. Did we divide by sine first? No, cos first, okay. So now we divide by sine. Divide, so let's use green again. Divide two by sine square. Remember what two is. Cos square plus sine square is equal to one. So let's divide by sine square together. Uh, so cos square over mm -hmm. sine square. So there are four people here. Mm -hmm. Sine square theta over sine square, square theta. Over sine square theta. Mm -hmm. And then one it over sine square theta. Over, yeah. Now, what is cos square over sine square? One and over sine uh, Set 10. The word. What's it called? Cotan. It's cotan. Cot. Cotan squared potato. Cot, not cotan squared. When you are using theta, oh, yes. that's a cot. Hello, everybody understand? Cot squared theta. Yes. Mm -hmm. Alex, Yanko? Mm -hmm. I said yes. Okay. Because I can't see everybody's face, so I can have the whole screen. Okay, now I can see everybody's face. Because sine square over cos square is tan. So cos over sine should be one over tan, and one over tan is cos. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So one over tan is going to be, so this is more like, maybe I write one over tan first, if that makes it clearer to some people. And this is going to be one and is equal to what? What is the inverse of sine? Cosec, Cosec theta. squared. Cosec. Oh, yeah, Cosec squared. Cosec squared. So again, inverse of tan is cot. So this is cot squared theta plus one is equal to cosec squared theta. You see, each of these three and four can also be written like two. Just like we have the implication of two, we can have the implication of three, which means our tan square is sec square minus one. Hello, I forgot to write yes. that. So please, you write that. After three, you write the implication just like this. Tan, if you make tan square the subject, you are going to have sec square minus one. Okay, so please, I need you to write that. Then before you go to this one. Should we also and write if one is the subject? No. This is, you know, because when you say one is a subject, it means whenever you see one, you assume you can use that. Different situation will warrant it. So there's no need to do that. Okay, now, so quickly, I label this as four. And these are all the Pythagorean identity that you need to know for HL course. And of course, for this one, we can say cot squared theta 
is sec, cosec square, sorry. Cosec squared theta minus one. This is an implication, a consequence of number four. It's still part of number four. So I want you to do the same for number three. Okay, it's gonna look like this. So the consequence of this will look like this. Tan squared theta will be equal to sec squared theta minus one. Okay, and if you look at this, this is actually difference of two square. Sec theta plus one, sec theta minus one. Is that not? Aha, uh -huh. and this also, that will be cosec theta plus one, cosec theta minus one, if you use difference of two square to factorize. So you should watch out for all this uh, when you're practicing. You should watch out for all this when you're practicing. Let me show you something quickly. Sorry, uh, the class is taking longer than I expected. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up soon. Let me show you something quickly because I don't want you to then struggle with what to do on Tuesday. Hmm. So keep your eyes on the board. Can you see? So these are yeah. the Pythagorean identities, the first one, and the second one, and the third one, and the implication of the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are Pythagorean identities, and this is how it is done. To prove the first one is the same, dividing by cos square, something like that. So you can use it in so many ways. You are going to simplify, and you are going to prove. This is simplify. This example five and six is about simplify. Even example seven is about simplify. Example eight is about simplify. Uh, there's no proof yet. There should have been proof. Okay, they didn't put any example for proof. Anyway, so look at this. This should have, I don't need to play it. We can look at it together. Simplify this. So you see, you factorize. Okay, when you factorize this, oh, one minus sine squared. That is cos square. So basically, this is just two cos square when you simplify. Simplify in the sense that there were two terms, now it's becoming just one term. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. Alex, you are not talking. I say yes just now. I, mm. I can't hear you. So please mm. acknowledge, okay? Now for this one, to simplify, you look at it. Um, okay, okay, signs, sign can be factorized. Right? If you bring sine out, you're going to get cos squared plus sine squared. Oh, cos squared plus sine squared is what? One. One. Right, Alex? Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Yes or no? Even if you don't understand yes. something, don't just go blank. This is why I get angry, dude. Just say something. Oh, I don't get it. Not just look, and when I'm done now, you don't. I don't know if you understand or not. I hate that. Cos square plus sine square is one. That is the first trigger, the Pythagorean identity. So when you factorize, you can see that this leads to one, and sine square times one is sine times one is just sine. Another one. Look at this. Expand and simplify. Very easy. When you expand. This is the identity used to expand. I believe everybody knows this. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you expand, you get this one square, two times this times this plus this. And you can bring all the square together. Now it looks like the first Pythagorean identity, mm -hmm. which gives one again, and you have this. Later, this term can be simplified, but you don't need to worry about it at this point, okay? And, and that's how you do this. So for example, here, you were asked to prove this. This is what we have proved, isn't it? So you don't need to prove it anymore. Basically, you are just to start the trig identity here and divide by sign instead. That's what we have just proved ourselves. So you don't need to prove it, okay? Mm -hmm. But you can simplify different ones. Please make sure I will send some of this to you on Tuesday for class practice. Then look at this, it's a factorize. Difference of two square only, that's it. It's a factorize, which means we want to see factors. We want to see factors. 
Okay. So this is just like a square minus b square, a plus b, a minus b, that's it. This looks like x squared minus 3x plus 2. Aha, look at it here. Can you see? And that is going to be this monic quadratic expression. Can you see that? Which means yeah. the factorized form will look like this. We did this for exponential function also to factorize, remember? So mm -hmm. now we are doing it for trigonometric function. And last but not the least, you have to simplify this. Hello? To mm -hmm. simplify this, again, you factorize, right? When you factorize, you get this. Look, I'm trying to show you step by step. You get this. Uh... And the bracket one is one square minus cos square. So that can be difference of two square. One plus cos, one minus cos. And one plus cos is waiting for you down there. So you just cancel and you have this. Okay? Similarly for the second one, factorize. Cos minus sine. This is cos square minus sine square. So this denominator can be factorized with difference of two square. Yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you cancel, you get one plus this only. So another way of setting this question is to say, Prove that this is equal to this. You will get that proof a lot. So all you have to do is say, oh, left-hand side is equal to this. Then you continue to simplify your left-hand side until you get your right-hand side using the necessary identity and putting the reason in the bracket like this. Understand? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll show you one, then we call it a day. So this is the factorized one. Let me show you, pick one of this. Uh, pick one of this. Maybe I pick a difficult one. Let's do this one together. Okay, and I'll, I'll stop the class. Sorry, please. I'm gonna have to end at 2.30, apologies. Okay, do you, which one of these do you prefer? Maybe you choose yourself. I'm saying I. I think I, I is fine. I is fine. Okay, let's quickly do I together. With I, then you can do J yourself later and even the rest. So let's pick I together uh, quickly. Because I just want to give you something to see in the video so that when I'm not around, you have, uh, you already have a, a video of an example of a proof. Understand? Mm -hmm. I can actually use this side. Shouldn't be that long, I think. Okay, I don't want to risk it. Good. Uh -huh. Proof. So this is application of these identities. Application could be simplify or proven, but this one says proof. Prove that uh, so I'm going to go to different windows now. I hate that. Sine over one minus cos, then minus sine over one plus cos. Okay. Sine theta over one minus cos theta, then sine theta, one plus cos theta is equal to two cot theta. Please pay attention, everybody. So, proof. Okay, like saying, okay, evidence of my work, something like that. Proof. When you're proving, is a direct proof. We have done direct proof in topic one. You start from one side, you get the result of the other side. Don't do side by side in every step. I don't want to see that. And usually for trigger identity, you can start from either left or right also. So you always start from the complicated side. In this case, the left hand side is the one that looks complicated. Understand? And when you're proving, you keep your eye on the goal. 
the goal is to get two courts. If you look at it, two courts. This is two over what? Anybody? Tan. Two over tan. Alex, is there a problem? I just don't remember the equation. Which equation? Do you know what courts mean? Cortical is one over 10. I don't remember that equation. You don't remember which equation? The equation of cot equals okay, okay. to one but over But now 10. you remember. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So cot is one over time. So two cot means two over time. Yes? So basically, this is where you are trying to get to. Because the moment you get to this point, you can always write it in this way. So you keep your eye on the goal. The goal is two over time. I said tan, not court, because we are familiar with sine, cos, and tan. Is that not? So yeah. if we can take all this sine and cos here to something that looks like tan, then tan can do the rest because tan has a relationship with court. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's how you think when you're trying to prove. So you say left-hand side, you don't jump to the simplification. You quote the left-hand side first. Sine theta, sine theta again, one plus cos theta. That's your left-hand side. Then you say this is equal to, these are just algebraic fractions, right? So that is one minus cos theta, one plus cos theta. I want to combine as a single fraction. Why am I combining as a single fraction? My goal looks like a single fraction. So I don't need two fractions. Hello? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what will be the first one here? Sine theta. Sin theta. Sin theta. Uh -huh. Plus. Plus. Oh, sorry. Times one. Keep your eye plus, on it, please, Alex. Keep your eye on it. Don't just speak. Think before you speak. And Elsin, you need to slow down. I need to know that everybody understands what I'm doing. Yes, what do I have? Uh, Side theta times one plus cos theta. I, I write times. Open, Open bracket. bracket. I need you to think like a HL student and speak like a HL student. Open bracket. Yes. One plus, one plus cos, cos theta. theta. Good. Close bracket. I can't hear Alex's voice unless he doesn't understand. He needs to speak even if he doesn't understand. Total silence is not allowed in my class. Okay. Minus. 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 Sin, sin, sin theta. Open times bracket. Open one, bracket. Oh, one minus cos one minus theta. Cos close theta. bracket. Cos theta. Minus theta. This correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So good. So we open this bracket. And the next thing is to just simplify. What do I have? Sine theta, sin cos theta, theta, cos theta. Then minus, minus sine, sine theta, theta, theta. Mm -hmm. plus sine theta, theta cos plus theta. Sine sine theta, theta, cos theta. theta. And if I open the one at the bottom, what do I have? Over one minus what? Cos squared theta. Cos what? squared theta minus one squared. What? Isn't it difference of two squares? So it's yeah. going to be this? You can cancel the squared on the one. Like this? Yes. But isn't the cos that's going to be negative? This is how people fail simple things. Why is the cos coming? Oh, one, min one minus cos squared theta. OK, good. <laughs> Yes, what next? Uh, what the can signs I do? can cancel. Say that sign again. On the, top. the sign on the top can cancel. Good. And then you can write two sign data cost data. Alex, you are too far behind and I don't like it. Two sign Your focus. Cost data. Let's keep the, the end whatever here. So what do I have? Two sine theta cos, cos theta. theta. Two sine theta cos one theta. Minus theta. Cos one minus cos squared theta. 
it still doesn't look like what we want. This is what we want. We're in trouble. Sign calls can be removed. Uh, Say that again, Alex. Sign data calls that can be removed. I, don't want I can't hear you. You need to speak clearly. Sign data calls data can be removed from the top. Why? So two would be the. So because I need two, I just remove this. That's it. No, put it. How do we remove it? That's the question. You don't just say thanks that because that can be removed, which means you just want me to cancel remove. Unless you can defend the remover, then it doesn't make sense. Factorize, factorize with the bottom. Okay, the so factorize the bottom means coming back to this place. Why do we have to go back when we have just left that place? I think we should factorize out cause on the top and the bottom. How do you factorize factor cause from the top and bottom? Because cause is not common to this. Yeah. So how do we factorize when there's no cost? I thought one is sine sine. I thought one is sine square plus cos square. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah, that's it. One is cos square plus sine square. So you can introduce I'd that. Like tape. But you I'd don't like even need to just... introduce that. You don't need to say one is equal to because. If you focus on one is equal to, how many one is equal to are you going to start remembering? That's what I was telling Nelson the other time. You don't say one is equal to something. So in this case now, you're going to say one is equal to. So anywhere you see one, how do you know what to bring in? Uh, you could write Rather from Pythagorean use... identity. Rather you use the implication of the identity. Cos squared plus sine squared is one. So each of them is one minor, just like probability. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. Yanko? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm great. Sorry. I just need to be sure everybody's following. So what is one minus cos square? Sine squared square data, data square plus data. cos squared data minus cos squared data. What is so it one about minus. Now? What is one minus cos square? Give me the answer that I asked for. I don't know. Sine squared theta. Sine squared theta. That's what I want. Data. All right, thank you. So this is going to be equal to, so this implies that our left hand side is going to be two sine, two sine theta, theta cos theta. Cos theta divided by sine squared theta. But you need to tell us the reason. So what you can say is this. You can say since, you can write below this one, since sine squared theta is equal to one minus cos squared theta. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Then we can say it implies that left-hand side becomes that. You see, I stated the reason. Alternatively, if you don't write this line, you can put a bracket here because sine squared theta is equal to one minus cos squared theta. So you don't have to do both, either of them. Okay. Is it that your reason is before you write it or after you use it, you state the reason immediately. Okay. And if you use this, remember I have disconnected this equality sign. You see, they were being connected line by line, right? Introducing this means I've disconnected it. You see, I introduced my left-hand side again. Do you understand? Yes. Because if I do not put my left hand side again, this equality will be assumed that it is the continuation. It's, uh, this is linked to it. So it's more or less sine squared theta is one minus cos squared theta, which is equal to this. Are you saying this is equal to this? Am I making sense? Uh -huh. Yeah. So the moment you disconnect this equality sign, this flow of equation of logic, you need to put it again so that the flow can continue. All right? So mm -hmm. you don't need this because we already stated this one. So what do you notice, guys? Sign can cancel um, from top and bottom. Sign can cancel. What do we have now? Two, Two cos theta, theta over, sine, over theta. sine theta. But we know that sine over cos is what? Tan theta. Tan. So cos over sine will be the reverse of sine. Oh, tan. 
cut. Exactly. So this theta. is just two over tan theta. So here I'm going to use the brackets one because sine theta over cos theta equals tan theta. So you see, I've not disrupted the flow of the logic here. So I don't need to write my LHS again. Am I making sense? Yes. It has to be logically explained. And this is going to be what? Two, two cot theta. Cot. Please don't put bracket. It's redundant. Uh -huh. Two cot. Why do you want to put bracket? If you write two A, are you going to put two brackets A? No. Mm. And this is equal to right, right. side. And that's the end of your proof. Uh, Mr. Daniel? Yes, sir. Uh, would it make more sense to write from mm. from the second step on the right to write this one cos no on the on the right on the right side right side okay second from step from two cos theta over sine theta mm -hmm. would it make more sense just to use the cot the cot one instead of the like sine directly theta? yeah yes it's because allowed if you go from here step. to here I take it but if I go from here to here I don't want someone to be lost that's why i did this okay so if you say this over this is equal to this is allowed okay mm -hmm. okay but it's, it's just for beginners you might want to do this and state why then jump of course you don't need to say because uh one over tan is equal to cost don't need for that i'm just stating this because they are the identities that we have uh identified am i making sense guys Yes. Yes. So this is all for today. Sorry for the uh, taking your extra time. We will meet on Wednesday properly. Uh, on Tuesday, this video can be played for the practice that I will send. And please work on either. I think I might send two worksheets or maybe one worksheet in four pages. I don't know. I'll think about which one. And even if you finish your worksheet, there will be the question bank. Like this one that I just showed you earlier that contains about maybe 50 questions. You can try different question among yourselves. Just, you know, get engaged. There'll be the question mark okay. if you finish your activity earlier on. Okay. Thank you so yeah. much. See you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you.